Welcome back to the channel, Racer X here, and today I want to do a short video for you guys on something that wasn't even on my radar until somebody messaged me about it, and it really got me thinking, and it is about lot rot. It sounds really weird to say it, but truth be told, it can be a massive issue right now because cars are sitting longer on the lots, inventory has kind of gotten out of control, prices have gone out of control, those two things kind of go hand in hand, and right now, if you've got cars sitting for extended periods of time, they can be prone to what's called lot rot. So today I'll tell you all about what it is, is it important, should you know about it, and what you can do to prevent yourself from really getting hoops when you buy a new car if it's been sitting for a really long time. If you guys are brand new to the channel, don't forget, hit the subscribe button. You can find it right over here. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you're notified as to when my new content comes out. And off we go. Truth be told, cars need to be started and driven every so often to avoid problems in the future. And someone may say, well, look, these cars, they're made to be outside, they're made to be in inclement weather, all that kind of stuff, so it really shouldn't matter. But I promise you that it does. Keep in mind, this car and all the other cars out there, unless you're driving an EV, that's a whole nother ball of wax and a whole nother set of problems. They have lots of fluids in them from fuel, they've got engine oil, they've got brake fluid, they've got coolant, a whole number of things which will expand and contract when weather conditions change, right? When it gets cold, when it gets hot, you'll have a lot of expansion, you'll have a lot of contraction, all that kind of stuff. So things like hoses, they tend to break down over time. Your brakes certainly tend to rust. Uh, they don't have a special coating on them. So a lot of times you'll see your brake rotors with a whole bunch of rust on them. And those can actually warp over time. Also in your tires, um, with a lot of that expansion and contraction with varying weather conditions, you will see flat spots wear on tires. A lot of times those things have to be completely replaced. Certainly batteries, um, if they're not started with regularity, those things will drain and a lot of times they will never come back. I can't tell you how many times I've gone to lots to film on a car that's been sitting for quite a while and they say, well, let me go wash it and they cannot get it started. They put a jump box on it, still won't stay running. Turns out the battery has to be replaced. And these cars are just not designed to sit for extended periods of time, months and months on end, without, uh, without being run, started, all that kind of stuff. And that leads to this whole lot rot issue. So if you go to the dealership and you're all excited about a car, um, you really need to know how long that car has been sitting there. And truth be told, it may have been sitting there a really, really long time. I'm going to play you a little clip from one of my other videos a while back to tell you just how long these cars are sitting nowadays. These are the 10 slowest selling vehicles in the United States as of this month, according to Car Edge. And number one is almost unbelievable, but starting things off at number 10 is the Maserati Levante with a 288 day supply, which means at the current sales pace, it would take 288 days to sell all of the Maserati Levantes currently available on the market. So number nine, the Jeep Cherokee with 301 days supply, followed by the Mercedes-Benz SL at number eight with 319 days supply. Number seven, the Chrysler 300, 339 days supply. Coming in at number six, the Jaguar F-Type with a 356 days supply. Number five with a 358 days supply is the Ford Mustang Mach-E. Number four, the Dodge Challenger, 362 days supply. Number three, Dodge Charger, 424 days supply, bringing us to number two, the Dodge Hornet at 517 days supply. And finally, at number one, the slowest selling vehicle with an insane 784 days supply is the Ram 2500. So just think about that for a quick second. That is a lot of Mopars on that list. These cars are sitting for a really long time, 362 days for the Challengers. Now that is across the board, across the country. You may be in an area of the country where they turn a little faster, a little slower, but this is viable data that has been researched. A Challenger sits for a year on average before it is turned right now. And that actually may be a little worse because we had this huge influx of inventory before the 2025s come out. So that is just incredible to think of. The Charger is even worse. 424 day supply for the Charger. Um, the Hornet is a over a year and a half, 517 days. Those cars are literally sitting forever. And then, of course, you have the Ram 2500, number one on the list. That is over two years that that car is going to sit there on a lot. So if you're not really worried about this whole lot rot issue, you should be. 
So I wanted to come inside and get myself in front of some of the articles that I found while researching this video because I really wanted to know what the industry standard is for how long cars should be sitting on lots and how aggressive dealerships should be in terms of moving that inventory to make room for new inventory so these cars actually don't sit too long. So I found this and it says after 10 days, the vehicle should be reconditioned, marketed and available for purchase. Well, that kind of goes without saying in my mind, but it says at 30 days, uh, you should move the vehicle to a new location, preferably where it can be easily seen. That means after 30 days, they're already saying, hey, look, the car just isn't selling for whatever reason, uh, you know, reposition the thing on the lot. It also says after 45 days, it needs a good detailing, consider lowering the price already, and uh, maybe some additional incentives to get that car moved. And at 60 days, you really want to incentivize your salespeople to push that vehicle out uh, or go with your uh, exit strategy. And so that tells you 60 days, they're already saying your car should be getting moved after 60 days. And yet we have some of these uh, Stellantis Mopar vehicles sitting out there for a year, a year and a half, and in some cases, two years. And so this is way outside of the bounds of what really is acceptable in terms of how long these cars should sit on a lot and really what's healthy for these cars to sit on a lot. And uh, that is a bit troubling. Now, obviously, this lot rot issue could be worse in certain areas of the country, if you're in Canada even. I mean, yeah, it gets really freaking cold up there, and it's cold like seven, eight months out of the year. Uh, that's not necessarily ideal either. If you're in Florida, obviously, you kind of have a lot of salty stuff in the air. You may be more prone to rust. It really just depends on what area of the country you're from, how big the temperature swings are. I mean, there are a lot of factors that go into it, and I'm just trying to give you a few things to look out for. And yes, your new car will come with a warranty, so you can at least hang your hat on that. If you find something wrong, certainly take it to the dealership and let them know and hopefully they will make it right. And it's not reasonable to ask a lot porter to go and move all of the cars around every couple of weeks or even every month. Some of these dealerships literally have five, six, seven hundred units on hand, in some cases even more, and it's just too many vehicles to move around and drive on a regular basis. That's just the situation we're in right now. But I wanted to just kind of put this out there because if you're out there going to buy a brand new car, what you can do is ask your dealership to take a hard look at all of the items I just mentioned, right? Make sure they have a brand new fresh oil change. They may say no, but you say, look, I'm not buying the car unless you guys change the oil brand new. Um, I also want you guys to check all of the fluids, take a really close look at the tires, drive the car a lot. If the car has any shimmering in the brakes when you're driving it, you need to tell them about that before you buy it. Make sure you drive these cars quite a bit, guys, before uh, you buy them. Make sure everything sounds good with the engine. I mean, really have that dealership give the car a once over before you take delivery of it. I mean, that's kind of how you protect yourself just to make sure. And you can also ask your salesperson or your manager at your dealership, hey, how long has this thing been sitting on the lot? Because if it's been sitting for a year and a half, uh, first of all, I hope you're getting a pretty good discount. Second of all, um, yeah, you need to make sure that they give the car a once over you say, look, this thing's been sitting for you know 400 days. I really want you guys to go through this thing top to bottom and make sure the car is happy and healthy. If anything needs to be replaced, let's just get it done now before I even take delivery of the car. So that's really the biggest thing, guys, is just protect yourself. Make sure you know how long the car's been sitting there. Take a really hard look at all the fluid levels. Make sure they're checking the hoses um, you know, and listen to the engine as you're driving the thing to make sure it sounds happy and healthy. Have your mechanic ride with you. Um, if you're a pain in the butt, who cares? It's your investment, it's your money, and the dealership should be willing. If the car's been sitting long enough, they should be willing to make sure that you feel good about that uh, car purchase. Well, guys, that is about it for this one. I really just wanted to put this information out there, hopefully to protect some of you guys from getting a car that has this lot rot issue. And lot rot has varying degrees. Um, it can happen to old cars, new cars. I mean, these cars just, they cannot sit for long, extensive uh, periods of time, especially in the weather, in the elements. It's just not good for them. And just make sure your dealership does you a solid, checks that car over, and uh, that way you have a good, solid investment on your hands. And this issue, I don't know why it wasn't top of mind for me. I knew these cars were sitting for a really long time. I knew the prices had gone crazy, all the other stuff going on. I just hadn't really thought about the implications of the car itself and sitting there and what that could do in terms of, you know, will it hurt the car or not? So anyway, I would love to know what you guys think about this in the comments down below, and I'll catch you on the next one. So until then, Racer X.